Are you a certified peace officer in the state of Iowa? Yes. You reference yourself as a sergeant detective. Are those two different titles? Uh, detective is what I'm assigned to do. Sergeant is my ranking. How long have you been a sergeant? Uh, since 2016. And can you tell us what it takes to be promoted into the sergeant's position? Um, it's up to the uh, command staff. Was that an interview process? Yes. Do you need a certain educational background? Um, I know they've changed it over the years. I, th I think it's either a two, I think it's a two-year degree. What's your educational background? <coughs> uh, I attended the University of Northern Iowa and graduated there with a, a bachelor's degree. And then you said you were assigned as a detective. Correct. Okay. Is there a specific, uh, the word that's coming to my mind is bureau, but is there a specific set of crimes that you do detective work on or? Uh, no, we're just assigned zones. The county's split up into four zones. So whatever crimes happen uh, in our particular, each detective zones, we're responsible for those crimes. What zone are you assigned to? Uh, zone three. And what area does that cover? It's the southwest portion of the county. Uh, it would include uh, Palo, Fairfax, and Walford. Has that always been your zone? Yeah. Detective Grote, did you become involved in the homicide investigation of Melody Hoffman? Yes. And when you became involved in that, was that in your capacity as a detective? Yes. When did you become involved? Uh, on February 19th of this year. And tell us how that came to be. Uh, I received a phone call about 1 p.m. in the afternoon that day from my supervisor, Lieutenant Dave Buter. Uh, he had uh, informed me that a uh, deceased female had been located in um, Iowa County and that they had information um, that she uh, had possibly been in uh, Morgan Creek Park. Um, he asked that I go there along with a couple other detectives to uh, check the area for any evidence that, that could be uh, related to that case. So after you received that call from Lieutenant Buter, did you then go to Morgan Creek Park? I did. Is the Morgan Creek Park that you're referring to in Lynn County? Yes. Was there a specific area within the park that you were asked to focus your attention on? Um, it was the, um, I believe it was the first parking lot um, just as you come into the park off of uh, E Avenue Northwest. Do you know why you were asked to focus on that specific area? Um, just very generally speaking. Okay. Basically, they had um, maybe location data um, from some type of device uh, that belonged to the female victim was the way I understood it. And that's where it showed that it was at. And so when you arrived at Morgan Creek Park, did you start your search of that first parking lot area? Um, I did not. I drove past there um, and just kind of did a... Uh, overall drive. It's kind of a uh, large driveway area. There's a number of different um, like separate parking lots um, and then I eventually came came back to that uh, first parking lot that they were ref referring to and I think when that happened Sergeant Eric Lear was there and then Sergeant Tim Payne um, was there as well. When you went down this I think you described it as like a long driveway into the park. Were there areas down and along that driveway or other areas of the park that you also searched? Yeah, there's a large playground area, a large pavilion. Um, there is, uh, like I said before, multiple different um, separate parking lots. And then there's also a um, off-leash dog park there as well. Can you tell me or tell us when you were doing the search of these areas, what, what's a search entail? What's it look like? We, we were just looking for anything um, that may be um, 
connected to the uh, victim um, in Iowa County. So um, basically anything that could look out of place or um, maybe some blood evidence or clothing or pretty much anything, personal belongings. I know you named a couple of other sergeants that were involved. Do you recall how many of you were out there doing that? There was three of us. And approximately how long did you guys spend doing this search? Probably two and a half hours, somewhere in between two and three hours. Was there anything of evidentiary value found at the park during this search? No. While out in that area, did you attempt to locate uh, surveillance cameras or anything of that nature? So that's a newer... Um newer area, I think, within the past couple years, um, but they do not have any cameras at that location. So you did attempt to find out if there were surveillance cameras? Yeah, I was already aware from previous investigations that, that the new playground park area does not have surveillance cameras. Where'd you go after you left Morgan Creek Park? Uh, Sergeant Payne and myself uh, were then asked to go to the Walmart on the southwest side of Cedar Rapids. Um, I, th I think he had sent uh, Tim Payne uh, a couple receipts that were located uh, in a suspect vehicle during a search warrant. And those receipts showed purchases made from the southwest side Walmart? Correct. Were you guys in possession of or sent at some point copies of those receipts to take with you out there? Yeah, I think that came through on, on through a text message. So then did you go straight to Walmart from there? As I recall, yeah. Who'd you meet with at Walmart to assist in this part of your investigation? Uh, it was a loss prevention employee, Tyler Heggie. And did you ask Tyler to help you collect or find um, surveillance video from within Walmart at the time that correlated with those receipts? Yeah, we would have provided him, um, either shown him the receipts or provided him the date and time of each transaction. The first receipt, and I say first chronologically, but what, um, what was the date on the first receipt? It was uh, February 17th at 2.56 p.m. 2024? Yes. And so you say at 2.56 p.m., so the receipt also had a time stamp on it? Correct. Can you recall or do you have recollection of what was purchased during uh, that February 17th, 2.56 p.m. trip? Uh, I didn't at that time. The description, um, from the description, I couldn't tell what it was, but I, I later found that it was uh, a digital doorknob. And when you reviewed the video from the date and the time that was stamped on the receipt that was recovered, were you able to see who was making the purchase? Yes. And who made the purchase of that digital doorknob? Uh, it was the defendant, McKinley Luisma. And just to be clear, is he in the courtroom today? He is. Can you point him out, describe an article of clothing he's wearing? Uh, it's the gentleman sitting in the light blue long sleeve button up shirt. Your Honor, if the record could reflect this witness did identify the defendant? It will. The second receipt, chronologically, when was it dated and time stamped? Um, February 17th at um, 22.06 or 10.06 p.m. And was the loss prevention employee, Tyler, was he also able to assist in pulling video from the store at the time of that purchase? Yes. Did you view those videos? I did. Can you tell us what you observed from those videos? Um, for both of them. For the videos related to the 10.06 p.m. purchase. Okay. Um, so there were four videos. Um, one would have been at the um, um, in the parking lot, um, showing the vehicle um, of the three people um, that were related to this specific transaction. 
Then there was an overhead shot at the self-checkout showing the purchase itself and the three individuals who were there. And then there was two other clips um, up at the front of the store, so past the point of sale registers, um, two different clips of them um, leaving or exiting the store. And so when you're discussing these different clips and the location of these cameras, there were multiple cameras that were recording simultaneously during this time. Correct. And those different cameras would pick the defendant up throughout the store. Yes. Were you able to ascertain from your review of these different um, camera angles what the defendant was shopping for or what purchases he made in the store? Yes, for um, that evening purchase at 2206, it was for two machetes and two pairs of coated gloves. And what's a coated glove? Um, I believe it's just a nylon glove that has kind of a, maybe a rubber coating. And you saw that on camera? Yes. Did you also confirm that with the itemized list of items on the receipt? Correct. As you were viewing these different camera, camera angles on the surveillance, um, were you able to take some screenshots from those surveillance videos? I did, I did not take any screenshots. Um, I believe it was probably somebody with the Marion Police Department. I just, we just forwarded the video in its entirety, the video clips to the Marion Police Department. Okay. Have you, since having retrieved the videos, seen the screenshots that were taken from the surveillance videos that were collected? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time, I would like to show this witness uh, states exhibits 7A through 7P, please. And I'm just going to go through them quickly, Detective Grote. Do you recognize these photos from the surveillance video that was collected? Yes. And were these screenshots of video that was taken on the 17th of February, 2024? Yes. Your Honor, the state offers 7A through 7P. Any objection to 7A through 7P? Exhibits 7A through 7P are admitted. And may the state have permission to publish those exhibits, Judge? You may. Detective Grote, firstly, I want to just, there's a laser pointer up there if there's something that you want to draw our attention to. Okay. Um, in State's Exhibit 7A, can you tell us what we're looking at in this photograph? Um, this is the sporting goods section at the Southwest Side Walmart. The uh, three individuals on the clip, um, the one with the stocking cap, the white male with the stocking cap on the right side is Dakota Van Patten. Would that be this person? Yes. Okay. The subject to his right is Logan Kimpton and then the male directly behind him is McKinley Luisma. And in 7B what are we seeing here? Uh, McKinley Luisma. Is that the same aisle that was seen in the previous exhibit? Yes. And in 7C what are we seeing? Uh, Dakota Van Patten. 7D? Uh, the same three individuals. The first one, Van Patten, then Kimpton, then Luisma. And in States Exhibit 7E, what camera angle are we looking at here? So this is above the uh, self-checkout register. And are you able from this angle to recognize the party shown in this photograph? I can just because I've reviewed the video clip. Okay. Who is the person in the bottom right-hand corner? 
McKinley Luisma. And the person in the middle, is this just the Walmart employee? Correct. And whose shoe and hand in a pocket is seen on the left bottom side of this screen? I believe that's Dakota Van Patten's. <coughs> Excuse me. 7F, can you tell us what we're seeing here? Uh, the purchase uh, for the two machetes. There's two machetes there, and then the three, same three individuals. The person seen in the middle now, who is this? Kimpton, Logan Kimpton. And in 7G? So that is Logan Kimpton's uh, right hand inserting a $20 bill. After you had an opportunity to review the video, um, did the $20 bill come out of the defendant's wallet? Yes. And in 7H, is this the second machete that was being purchased? As the other one's in his left hand? Yes. Speaking of um, 7H, there were items seen in this gray bag. Were those items selected from the store by the defendant or the two others that were with him? No. How did they get in that bag? Uh, we had gone back to Walmart the second day uh, for a few other things and were asked um, by Marion investigators to inquire as to how those two items got in the bag. Um, in reviewing the video um, at the store, um, there was a, a Walmart associate who um, was at the register um, just prior to this transaction. It appears that she rang those two items up um, and then got distracted by either a text or a phone call on her phone and, and walked off leaving, uh, I believe, like a flavored water and a box of uh, cookies in that bag. And 7i, what are we looking at here? Uh, that shows McKinley Luisma uh, holding um, both machetes and he has his wallet out, I believe. I take that back. I think those are the coated gloves in his left hand. And in 7J, are you able to confirm that in his left hand it is the coated gloves? Yes. What are we seeing in 7K? Uh, they just left the self-checkout. Uh, McKinley Luisma has the gray sweatpants, dark colored hoodie, and red shoes. And then to the left, uh, individual with the stocking cap on is Dakota Van Patten. And the subject that you can barely see is in front of him is Logan Kimpton. And the three individuals that you just referenced, are they also shown in 7L? Yes. Shorter one is Kimpton? Yes. Stocking cap, Dakota Van Patten? Yes. And this gentleman to the left with the red shoes is Luisma? Yes. And in 7M, is that a continuation of them leaving the store? Yes. Who's carrying the machetes in these photographs? McKinley Lu Luisma has the bag. And the two long items, are those the machetes? Correct. When you say that McKinley Luisma has the bag, did that bag when they left also contain that flavored water and that package of cookies? Yes. 7N, what camera angle are we seeing in this photograph? Uh, it's the parking lot. Same three individuals? Yes. On the left, is this Dakota Van Patten? Yes. And is McKinley Luisma the subject on the right? Yes. And then Logan Kempton in the middle? Yes. And in 7-0, what are we seeing? Uh, they're getting into a, a dark colored sedan. When you say dark colored, are you able to tell what color 
that vehicle is? It looks blue. I think we talked about 7 i I'm going to move on to 7P. Same people, same car in the same parking lot. Yes. Was there anything, um, will you clear my screen, Judge? Other than being tasked with searching of the Morgan Creek Park and the collection of videos and investigation done with the videos at the Southwest Walmart. Was there anything um, in addition that you did as part of this investigation? Uh, we went to a couple other places to try to obtain video. So just some canvassing? Yeah. Okay. And to be clear, was there any video found at those other places that you went to that was relevant to your investigation? Um, we had gotten a video clip from the BP in Walford of a um, dark-colored sedan that looked similar to the one at Walmart from that evening purchase, um, but that was, that was all. The BP that that was obtained from, um, was that BP selected because it was on the path to the Lily Pond area? Correct. We, I had gotten information, um, or one of the t detectives had gotten information from, from the Marion Police Department and specifically wanted us to check that BP. Okay. I don't have any additional questions, Judge. Cross-examination. Thank you. Good afternoon, Detective. Hello. Let's go back and talk about your work at Morgan Creek Park, please, okay? Okay. 
you went there and arrived at sometime in the afternoon, is that right? Yeah, it would have been shortly after 1 p.m. Daylight. Yes. Your information was that Melody had been there very early that morning. Is that correct? I don't remember receiving a, a specific time. And you were directed to concentrate on a particular parking lot. Is that your recollection? Yes. You were looking for anything that may have evidentiary value? Correct. You were not the only one searching, correct? No, there was two others. Three total? To my recollection, yes. Now, do you recall, let's say from midnight that morning until when you were there in the afternoon, had it rained? I don't recall. Had it snowed? I don't know. You spent two and a half to three hours searching that area? Approximately, yeah. And you didn't know exactly what you were looking for, correct? Correct. But one of the things you mentioned keeping an eye out for was blood, is that right? Yes. In the hours that you three were out there, you did not locate anything that appeared to be of evidentiary value, is that correct? Correct. Thank you, Detective. Nothing else. Redirect. Just briefly, Your Honor, I want to, um, Detective Grote, ask you just a couple more follow-up questions about that uh, video scene from the BP gas station. Okay. When you saw the blue sedan at the BP gas station, did that vehicle ever stop at the BP? If it did, it was very brief. Um, it entered the parking lot, pulled up to uh, one of the gas, the, the first gas pump that it came to, and then it kind of slow rolled and then left. No one ever got out? No. And when you were watching the video clip from the BP with that blue sedan pulling up, slow rolling, driving off, was there any, um, did you see any law enforcement vehicles or officers visible in that video at the time? No. I don't have anything else, Judge. Cross. Nothing else, thank you. Thank you, thanks. 